So good. Well, welcome once again, everybody. And uh, uh, if you don't know me, I'm Peter Perimala, uh, along with my wife, Cara. We pastor the church here. And it's my privilege this morning to finish our series, six-week series that we did on the book of, we've been doing on the book of James. And when I wrote this and been meditating and thinking about this, and uh, I had a couple of things, uh, topics, and I really felt to dwell into the book of James. And I've read that many times before, but again, I was reading it, just kind of marinating my spirit with the Spirit of God and meditating on His Word. And I have to say, um, I have been thoroughly blessed and challenged by this book and this series. Um, I hope you can witness to that too. Uh, If you don't, uh, I pray that the Holy Spirit will continue to speak to you. So we've done um, five weeks, we've done one on trials and temptations, book of James chapter 1 verse 2, we focused, that was a key text, and I want to say today, God wants us to be overcomers, Amen. amen, amen, God wants us to be overcomers, you know, in this world we will have troubles, wherever you look there are troubles, but Jesus Christ died on the cross. And he rose again on the third day for you and I. He defeated the devil. And he set you up and me. He set us up not for failure but for significance. Amen. Amen. His death on the cross so that you and I can live a life that is significant in the sight of God. Now the worldly ways may look, the world may look at and go that we are insignificant. I'm not talking about the world, neither am I concerned about the perspective of the world. I'm saying God has set you and I up to be significant. He didn't set you up for failure. He didn't set up the bar so high that we can't attain Uh, that righteousness, or we think, oh, that is too much for me, I can't handle that. And God didn't set it that high so that you can fail and you can look look down and say, oh, look at you, you failed, I knew it. No. God didn't die on the cross to set you up to be a failure. He, the Bible teaches us that everything, you know, nothing comes to us, I, 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 I forgot the exact verse, but I'm paraphrasing it, but nothing, God has not put us in a place where we, we're overwhelmed by the temptation. There's always a way out. Amen. There's always a way out with the help of God. So God wants us to be an overcomer. Please say an overcomer. Amen. Uh, and next thing is faith in actions. And um, faith and actions, see, it's not just about believing, it's about living. You live what you believe. Amen. The devil believes that Jesus is the Son of God. How many of you know that? That's why he tempted Jesus. The devil knows Jesus is the Son of God, but he doesn't live it. Now, if you believe, that's good, but what really matters is when you and I live. So what James is saying is faith without actions is dead. Amen. Now, faith is supernatural. We can't have faith by, I'm going to have faith, I'm going to have faith. No. We say, God, as we read your word, would you increase my faith in you? Faith is not natural, it's supernatural. So we need to say, God, I believe in it. As Courtney was saying, step out of the boat. God, I know if I step, I will sink. But Lord, your word says that you will never leave me nor forsake me. So I'm going to step out. So faith without actions is dead. Next one is taming the tongue. Who's been exercising that? Amen. I've been exercising that too. Taming the tongue. What is the point in just preaching it and not living it? Guess what? You may think I'm awesome, but God knows me. And God says I'm awesome too. Now, you're awesome as well. But we all have our shortcomings. But I hope and pray that you've been really consciously working on taming your tongue. We need to tame our tongue uh, when we talk about people. 
The fourth one was wisdom from above. We don't want the wisdom from the world. We want the wisdom from God. Wisdom from God on how to live. Wisdom from God on how to do relationships. Wisdom from God on how to do business. Wisdom from God on how to um, uh, 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 be a good student. Uh, b- b- wisdom from God for pretty much everything in our life. Amen. And then we talked last week on don't be deceived because the conflict is in the heart. The conflict is really in my heart. If my heart's not settled, James is talking from chapter 4, if your heart's not settled, you will have conflict with everyone else because you are living with the conflict inside you. Amen. If we are holding grudge and if you're holding resentment and if we look and go, oh, my life is a bit average, and we, we, if we pull ourselves down, we pull other people down. You cannot love people if you don't know how to love yourself just as the way God loves you. I'm not talking new age theory. I'm saying God loves you. He loves you more than you realize. He loves me more than I realize. But if we don't understand the revelation of God that I don't need to do stuff to accept the love of God or for Him to accept me and for Him to make me righteous, it's not based on what I do. It's based on who He is and that my faith in Him says that He is the risen Son of God who set me free. He cleansed my sins and I repent and He now purified me and I'm the Son of God. I am made righteous in Jesus. It is not in my behavior that I find righteousness, but it is in my faith walk with Jesus Christ. And because of that love, the byproduct of that love is I serve. I serve God and I serve people. It's an honor and a privilege to serve people. It's not a chore. It's a privilege. It's an honor. If you're a connect group leader, if you're a leader in this church, it's an honor. God's given those people to you to serve. So do it diligently. Do it fearfully. Then we jump into today is James chapter 5. And we're looking at the title is fix your eyes on eternity and keep praying. Fix your eyes on eternity. Amen. So, As we prepare our hearts, I want to encourage you because there's a scripture here. It says, if you are sick among you, call upon the elders. Let them anoint you with oil and pray for you. Lay hands and the sick will recover. After the service this morning, we're going to pray for you. If you're sick in your body, please come forward. If you're sick, not just physically, but even mentally, because the mental health, that is not from God. Amen. Yeah. So we go, the only way to break that is by the power of God. So we're going to exercise faith today. We're going to pray and we're going to believe in God today. So Father, we pray as we break open your word that you would speak to us. As we break open your word that you'd minister to us. That we don't just be hearers of the word, but God, we will be doers of the word. The Lord, you would... Transform us on the inside out. We thank you for the book of James and we bless you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. By the way, I just want to say I've lost my voice. Uh, People are worried about, you know, what's going on around, but I've lost my voice. I was at cricket on Friday and I was going, let's go, black caps, let's go. That's what I was doing, you know. And I was so wanted the Black Caps to win. And I'm glad India let us win. <laughs> That's what happens when you have the mic. You can say what you want now. Uh, <coughs> so excuse if I cough and um, just my voice. I just, just wanted to clarify that. All right. Book of James, let's fix our eyes. So the overview of of week um, six on chapter five is James is writing and he's saying, fix your eyes on eternity. Your existence here is only temporary, but you will be with me forever. So our eyes need to be fixed on Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. 
Our eyes have to, everything we are today here, fix our eyes on Jesus. This helps us to live with urgency, with passion and purpose. Amen. This helps us to live when we fix our eyes on eternity, to live with an urgency, with passion and with purpose. That I don't want to be sidetracked by what the, the world offers to me because everything the world offers is only temporary. Colossians 3 says that. Fix your eyes on things above, not on things on the earth. Everything is temporary. Everything that we are fighting for, everything that we are waking up early and going to bed late and not able to sleep and we're popping sleeping pills and heavy hearts and all that. All that is temporary. Fix your eyes on eternity. And James is not only writing to the new church, but he's also writing to us through the help of the Holy Spirit. And what it really means to live our lives and what it means, what our, our, our lives really matter, how our lives really matter here on earth. And then as we live for God, that we pray, we get to know God, we love God, and prayer helps us to propel into God, when the world is throwing stuff at us, it's prayer that helps us to push forward. Amen. Amen. It's prayer that will help us to push forward in God. And James, again I want to say, I hope and pray that we will be overcomers. That we will be overcomers. Come what may, that God, by God's grace, we will be overcomers and we will not be moved but by every doctrine that comes at us, but we will be firmly rooted in the Word of God. And I was saying last week, your faith shouldn't be dependent on the leadership of this church. Your faith should be dependent on God and His Word. Because people will fall. People will struggle. If your faith is dependent on leadership, you will fall. So we encourage you, read your Word. Get to know the Heavenly Father. If my, your faith is dependent on me, you will be disappointed. And if my faith is dis disappointed, if my faith is dependent on you, I would have been disappointed the day I arrived. <laughs> and that is true. Our faith should be in Jesus. We don't have time to play around. We don't have time to play around. The devil is deceiving the body of Christ. And I've been talking about this, that churches have become so entertaining. We're so worried about the coffee. We're so worried about lights, camera, action, and all those kind of things that we think that the power of God is in coffee. Coffee ain't going to give you salvation. The cafe ain't going to give you salvation. That Whitaker chocolate ain't going to give you salvation. It is the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And I'm encouraging you. I mean, I sat through a movie. I took my wife to a movie. I, uh, I said, we're going, I booked it. I said, we're going to a movie. So she just followed me. It was, I didn't realize it's two and a half hours. Of Wakanda forever. <laughs> I think it's Wakanda forever. <laughs> You know, and then we got to the movie, and I'm thinking, man, it's late. I thought, we'll put the kids to bed, then go to the movie. We sat there. I thought, I'm enjoying it. And then I see my wife playing on her phone. She's bored out of brain. <laughs> but that's okay. She's sitting next to me. That's what matters. But I was thinking about that. Two and a half hours, everybody enjoying movie, but for two hours for us to sit in the presence of God as a body of Christ, one Sunday, oh, it's too long. Oh, it's too hot. Oh, it's too cold. One day I get to clean the house. Well, don't clean the house. Clean this house first. Clean this house first. Because when he comes like a thief in the night, is this house clean? He's not going to come for your dirty dishes. He's going to come for your heart. He's going to come and check your heart. He's going to check my heart. And he's going to say, did you love me? Did you fellowship with me? Or were you distracted by what the world was offering you? 
Were you living because of what the world was on? And James is challenging because James has been using a nice tone. But chapter 5, and it's like a pushback from James. And he's using the tone of an Old Testament prophet and, and, and the writings of, of, of like Solomon. And he's using and he's pushing back at them. And he's going, guys, wake up. Church, wake up. Let's pick it up from verse 1, chapter 5. And I call this caution against loving money. Caution against loving money because money is not the issue. The love of money is the issue. Amen. Let's pick it up. Come now, you rich. Weep and howl for your miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Strong words. Your gold and silver are corroded and their corrosion will be a witness against you and... And will eat your flesh like fire. Graphic words. You have heaped up treasures in the last days. Indeed the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields. Which you have kept back by fraud. Cry out. And the cries of the reapers have reached the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. You have lived on earth in pleasure and luxury. You have fattened your hearts as in a day of slaughter. You have condemned, you have condemned, you have murdered the just. He does not resist you. So James is using strong words and he's saying don't rely on wealth. Don't rely on wealth. Don't rely on money. Money can get you some things. Money ain't going to get you peace. He's saying don't rely on money. You know, you kind of, it's kind of taken back because the tone of voice changes in James and the way he's writing. And he's using strong words here. And he's speaking about having a living faith and not a dead faith. And problem with our Christians today is we don't have probably have dead faith, but we have deceived faith. Deceived faith is I am okay. I don't need the church. I just need God. My goodness. If you read the Bible, you know how important church is if you love God. So he's encouraging us to say, hey, please don't have a living, dead faith. Don't have deceived faith. Have a living faith. And I want us to really check our hearts. Is my faith living? Or is it deceived or dead? Only you can answer that and God can. Don't deceive yourself because God cannot be mocked. God is not against us having riches, but he's, James is stressing the point. He said, be humble to be dependent on God, trusting God in everything. Don't just rely on your money. In Revelations it says, how did they overcome the devil? By the blood of the Lamb and the bank money, the money in your bank? No. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. It's not what we own. It's by the testimony. And he's writing to these people. And can I say, I don't know where you're at with your accounts and money and all that. But we are all considered rich in this grand scheme of things in the world. We are all rich. You may not feel like it, but, the, but you're rich. Don't let Christmas take Christ away from your heart. Please don't use Christmas as an excuse to buy what you didn't have. Wouldn't it be cool to have a Christmas to go, God, who do you want me to bless today? I want to bless them more than I bless myself. And God will say, take Nathan out for shopping. He needs new clothes. So you'll take Nathan because he's only wearing shorts today. You know, Nathan needs new shorts, pants. I don't know. But do you see what I'm saying? Be led by the Spirit instead of our critical mind. And enjoy and use that as an excuse. Trust in the Lord. Because for our rich, because for the rich, it's easy for them to have a great problem with humility. That's what James is addressing. 
For the rich people who have everything they need, their struggle would be with humility. They struggle with humility. They struggle with being dependent on God. Perhaps the rich and the wealthy might have a tendency to do what they want to do and not trust in God. So James is cautioning. He's saying we need one another. And it, it's not a sin to be rich. Please don't get James wrong and me wrong. It's not sin to be rich. Be rich. But may your heart be even more richer towards God. Amen. He's not saying Who should, you shouldn't have a house. No, 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 no. He's saying be blessed. But I pray that your soul may prosper above all things. We can have all the wealth, but we are poor on the inside. Jesus counted some of rich persons to be his followers. Zacchaeus was a rich man. Joseph of uh, Arimathea was a rich man. Barnabas in the book of Acts was a rich man, but they were followers of God. Do you know what follower means? That not my will, but let your will be done. What James is saying is don't accumulate, but be a blessing. If God's blessed you, bless people. Amen. But otherwise, it's gonna, you'll have a fat heart, fattened heart. I was thinking, oh my goodness, cardio, bacon, you know. But, you know, wealth in this world presents an obstacle to the kingdom of God. I know a lot of people, and I'm sure you know it too, that we start well, but then we deviate because we fell in love with the world. And somehow we have a deceived faith. And we use scriptures to excuse our behavior. The best way to really test our fruit is surround yourself with people, and can we all be teachable? All of us, can we be teachable? And then he's a, he's a outcry of these people and, and you can see the, unjust by the unjustly treated by the rich person in verse 4. And we can see that, you know, it's interesting when I was reading that scripture there, it says the Lord heard their prayer, but it doesn't say the Lord responded. God hears your prayer, but how and when he will respond, we only leave that to God. We can't say, God, I'll give you till the 31st of December 2022. If you don't respond, I will become the God of my own life. I'll do it my way because I'm awesome. No, we trust in God. Don't let riches deceive you. Be rich, but don't let it deceive you. One of the sins is when we live indulgently without regard to others. It's a dangerous thing to say, oh, if their circumstances is what it is, it's because of their mistakes. No, the Bible talks a lot about looking after the poor. The Bible talks a lot about looking after the needy. Your sufficiency comes from God. Mine comes from God, amen. Amen. So we need to recognize that our time on earth is short. Eternity, eternity is forever. We need to understand our purpose is, is, purpose is God's plan, not our own plan. We are to fulfill His plan for our lives. And I am, my fruit is tested when I am fellowshipping with you. Amen. So we got to test our hearts and allow people to speak into our lives and know the plan and the purpose of God. We need to acknowledge our possessions are not our own. We are blessed to be a blessing. Amen. I heard once a pastor who married us, he challenged in church like this. He said, don't buy anything that you cannot give away. If the Lord challenges you to give away, are you ready to give it away? And if you cannot give it away, don't buy it. I thought, that's challenging. And I want to use an illustration today. I've got this umbrella. A few years ago, 
I was thinking about this. How do I illustrate this? I want to talk about what James is talking about is obedience, faith in action. And I used this umbrella a few years ago and I said it's the covering of the Lord over our life. When we obey God, when we, I've never used this one. When we obey God, when we follow God's way, not my will, let your will be done, we are in the covering of the Lord. We are in the blessings of the Lord. But when we say, God, I know you, but I want to do it my way, I'm walking outside the blessings of the Lord. But you see now, deceived faith is when we are in the covering, but partial obedience is also disobedience. Do you get what I'm saying? Partial obedience is disobedience. Can I have that knife, please? Thank you. So it's like I'm saying to God, God, I will obey you in certain things, but as I do that, you know, as I'm walking in the Lord, and then the devil starts attacking us, and you think, oh, yeah, I'm obeying God, and then when we disobey God, there's a hole. How many of you heard that don't give the devil a foothold? That's all it needs for rain to come through the umbrella. And you can say, well, I can use this, I'm clever. <laughs> Come on, we are uh, number eight wire mentality people. Let's be pragmatic. We are pragmatic uh, Christians in Kiwis, Aotearoa. We're pragmatic people. So what we do is we walk like this. But what you don't realize, this is only going to get bigger and bigger. Come on. If it's not... It's going to get bigger and bigger. And so what happens is partial obedience is disobedience. God, I love you, I'll serve people, but my money is my money. Oh God, 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 God I'm, I love you, I love you, but not too much. I want to walk in your protection, Lord, but as long as I'm able to put my hand in the world. James is saying, don't just be a hearer of the word, but be a doer of the word. Don't make allowance for the devil. And what we do then, we are so clever, we tape it up with duct tape. And we say, duct tape is the answer for everything. Can I just say, duct tape is not the answer for the issues of the heart. Jesus Christ is. How many of us living a life where we are in partial obedience to Jesus Christ? See, when I'm living in a partial obedience to Jesus Christ, I can't have people in my life. I can't have my wife come here, Kara. Let's do the let, come with, please. I can't have my wife walk with me in the rain and all dry. I'm singing in the rain. You know, singing in the rain. Oh, at least I'm walking dry. She's wet. The sin is upon her. Some marriage problems here. <laughs> you see what, what a, see partial, but you say, oh, well, let's come closer. We're giving allowance. This is deceived faith. Soon, very soon. <laughs> and you go, well, at least we got two that are dry. God doesn't want partial obedience. Please wake up. You can't say, I love Jesus, but I'm okay with pornography. I love Jesus, but I love my technology more than Jesus Christ. I love Jesus, but I love my India, India, cricket. I love my Jesus, but my, my, my workout, oh, my workout, you know, Jesus is down there. And then very soon, the devil's going to put another one. Your blessings, I've been saying our blessings can be a distraction. God give me the job, God give me the job. God give me my wife, God give me a wife. I get a wife now, for, bye bye God, I love you. Shall we go to Raratonga? Yeah, you know, let's go to Raratonga. You know, and let's sit down. Man, I love Raratonga than being in church on a Sunday. You see my umbrella? The devil comes. Like a thief. He doesn't come to hang out with you over a flat white. He doesn't. He comes to us like a thief to steal, to kill, 
and to destroy my umbrella. And I can't have anyone under my umbrella. Some are singing a song. But I don't, see, my point is when we disobey money, I want to say, James is challenging, is are you obedient to God with your money? Are you obedient to God with your money? Are you obedient to God? It's not about this. I can freely say that because I'm saying whatever doesn't, whatever God doesn't control, it will control us. If I don't give my money to God, money will control me. So James is saying, please don't. I like it. Now I'm playing, literally. This has got a better. Oh, that's better. That looks good. But you see, you don't want to, who wants an umbrella like this to go in the rain? It is foolishness. To go in the rain like this. Who wants to come with me under the rain? Nobody. But I'm saying, this is how we're walking with Jesus. Oh, but, but look, there is no rain here. But my friend, there may not be rain there, but there's a lot of rain here. Our arrogance, our grudges, our hurts, our deceived heart, our pride, our all, all everything you can name it, they're all basically going to destroy us. So that's what James is saying. But James didn't use the umbrella. I just used the umbrella as an illustration. Does that make sense? And I pray that we will use an umbrella that the power of God, now I want you to imagine, but I pray that you will walk in the fellowship, in, the, in communion, and in intimacy. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. God, I don't want to do it because as James said last week, he said, don't rejoice when you sin. Mourn. Say, God, I'm a sinner. I'm so sorry. God, would you, re would you heal me as I repent? Let's be people that are truly in love with Jesus. Amen. Therefore, be patient. Verse 7 says, therefore, be patient until the coming of the Lord. See how the farmer waits for the precious fruit on earth, waiting patiently for it until it receives the earth early and latter rain. You also be patient. Establish your hearts, not your careers, your hearts for the coming of the Lord is at hand. Amen. Young people, you think, oh, I'm young, I'm going to party, I'm going to have, a, you know, I've got a good body, I've got to use this and abuse this. You know, one day we all have to give an account to God. We all have to give an account to God. It's not your body, it's not your life, it belongs to Jesus. And the devil is out there killing you, you can go get drunk. Nathan taught us at uh, um, camp, a young adult's camp, he was talking on sin. And he said, sin is expensive. Alcohol is expensive. And he was coming from an accounting point of view. Don't waste your money. And I thought sin is expensive. Not only financially, but spiritually and physically. Sin is expensive because you live in guilt and regret. So he's saying be patient. Be patient just like he's using here. Just like the farmer waits for the rain. Be patient in the Lord. Persevere in the Lord. That's why I titled it. Be patient in your suffering. Be patient. When God, when? Only God knows when. But let's be patient. Patient is not sitting on our backside and doing nothing. Patience is saying, God, I will do what you call me to do, but I will leave the judgment to you. Amen. I'll leave the judgment to you, Lord. I'll leave it to you to judge people, not me. But as for me, I want to serve you, and I want to be honest to you if you come right now. That's what James was saying. He's saying, count it all joy when you fall in various trials and tribulations, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience, but let patience have its perfect work, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And then he goes on to say, do not grumble against one brother, one another brethren, lest you be condemned. Oh, Behold, the judge is standing at the door. My brethren, take the prophet 
who spoke in the name of the Lord as an example of suffering and patience. Indeed, we count them blessed who endured. You have heard of the perseverance of Job and seen the end intended by the Lord, that the Lord is very compassionate and merciful. Let's be patient. Amen. Do not grumble. Do not grumble. Be patient. The Lord is merciful. Don't go producing Ishmael's. I'll do it my way because I know better than God. And you go pop on Ishmael. But God says, you can pop Ishmael's. My promise only comes through Isaac. Don't produce ministry out of flesh. Don't produce, I do this for God. Well, you're doing it for God. Look around. The trail is just confusion. The trail is just deception. The trail is just mess. But above all, verse 12, above all, my brethren, do not swear either by heaven or by earth or with any other oath, but let your yes be yes and no be no, lest you will fall into judgment. You know that yes is yes and no is no is not a motivation of, I can't be bothered, so no. I'm going to stick with my no, because I can't be bothered. No, a yes or a no should be in response to our prayer to God. In response, as I pray, I said, God, should I do that? Not because I'm selfish. Oh, man, I'm so tired. I want to sleep. Ah, oh, oh, you want to come to Canada? Nah, I'm tired. No. And I'm sticking with my no is no. And yes, he says, not in the flesh. But God, can I say yes? Can I say yes to that woman that I'm dating? And I will be faithful to you, God, not to her, but faithful to you first. Amen. Or, oh, everybody commits sin, so I'm going to commit sin too. So, we need to remember to be overcomers and be patient in suffering. Galatians 6, 9 says, don't get tired in doing good because you will reap a harvest in the end. Amen? Don't get tired in doing good. My last point is prayer of faith counts. Prayer of faith counts. First point is a caution against loving money. Be blessed with money, but don't love money. Use money, abuse money in the right way, not in the worldly way. Be patient in your suffering. Third one is prayer of faith counts. If is anyone among you suffering, let him pray. Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Isn't that cool? If you're suffering today, pray. But if you are Cheerful, then praise God and celebrate, not with alcohol, but with Jesus and godly people. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call on the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of, the faith, prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be forgiven. This is the key verse in this topic here. Confess your trespasses to one another, not just to Jesus Christ, to one another. What that means is, Kara, I have an attitude towards you. That's why I was being harsh on you. Would you forgive me? Mom, you irritate me. But I've had an attitude towards you. Would you forgive me, mom? Dad, you've been mean to me. But I've had even worse attitude. Would you forgive me? Pastor, you've been mean to me. I want to boil you, boil you up. Put some parmesan and tomato sauce and eat you up, pastor. What the Bible says is don't confess your sin to God alone. Confess your sins to one another. Oh God, I can't stand Rupert. God, I can't stand Rupert. Remove Rupert. Remove him, Lord. Please, Lord. And very soon you will remove yourself. Not Rupert. So you go into this church 
and then you will see Tom. Oh God, I got a Rupert Tom. Oh, it might not happen the first year, but trust me, it will happen. Because what was not dealt here won't, if it's not dealt there, it will carry out here. Because there is a Rupert wherever you go, amen. There's a Tom everywhere you go. But if I cannot be an overcomer with Rupert, I cannot overcome here with Tom. And then we say, the problem is Rupert and Tom. No, the problem is me. Confess, my son. Rupert, I am sorry, but you irritate me. Oh, Rupert. Ugh. You can vomit to him. Rupert will have a good laugh. And then he'll go, okay, that's your problem, but may God bless you. No, Rupert, would you forgive me? The Bible says when we confess with one another, this is the word of God. He's not a liar. It's the word of God. When I confess my issues with you, the Bible says that God will, he may heal you. That when you confess your trespasses with one another, pray for one another that you may be what? Healed. The effective prayer or fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Elijah was a man with nature like us. And James is saying now, hey, Elijah was like you and I. He prayed that it would not rain and it didn't rain. And I wish I prayed like that last weekend. It rained. It all leaked everywhere. Floods. For three years and six months it didn't rain. And he prayed again and heavens gave rain and the earth produced its fruit. Isn't that awesome? A prayer of a faithful man or a woman is counted by God. Don't pray a prayer because I have to. No, 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 no. God, it's not about, when I pray, it's not about my experience. It's about on your word. My faith is in your word, not in experience. So God, I put my faith in you because your word says, I am the Lord that healeth thee, so I am going to pray. And that's what we're going to go do tonight, today. We're going to pray today. The pastoral team and us, we've got oil. We're going to stand here and we're going to pray for you. Can I get the worship team up, please? And we're going to pray. And I pray as you come, my friends, hear this. You can come. This is a step of faith. Coming over here is a step of faith. He's saying, I'm stepping out because I trust God. And I, by faith, I come and I stand here. And the Bible says, this is not magic. This is not feel-good ministry. The Bible says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Physical sickness, mental sickness, mental abuse, tormentation of the devil, that is demonic. And God wants to set us free. Your experience is about church. Today is the day. Don't walk around like this. Don't be a ripped umbrella of faith. Walk in wholeness. Walk in freedom. Courtney was saying, I walk in free freedom now. Walk in freedom. And freedom is applying the word, not knowing the word and shooting other people with the word. But it is applying the word and saying, God, I want to walk under the covering of the Almighty. Hallelujah. That it is not by um, my faith. I don't want my faith to look like that. I don't want my faith to look like this. This is just a metaphor. But tonight, this morning, we're going to call. And I pray, guys, if there is an addiction, if there is sickness, addiction is alcoholism. It's a demonic sickness. Pornography is a demonic sickness. Holding grudge towards people is a demonic activity. Don't rationalize what is spiritual. Don't rationalize what is godly. So I want to give an appeal to you this morning by faith. I've asked the pastoral team this morning to come and stand with me. We're going to lay hands and we're going to pray for you. Whatever the sickness is, we come to God in faith. It could be a heart issue, not physical heart, but a, oh, my dad's mean to me, so I'm going to be mean to everybody else. Today it's going to stop. That church abused me, so I'm going to just sit there like this. No, today it's going to stop. What is the gospel? I have been set free by the precious blood of Jesus Christ. I no longer walk as a sinner. 
I no longer walk as condemned, but I walk in freedom in Jesus Christ. So can I get the, uh, the pastoral team up here, please? And as we sing that song, can, Rupert, can, come on, please. We sing that, that this is not to make you feel good. This song is just to kind of prepare our hearts, but I want you to be bold because I don't want to walk with a ripped umbrella. And you can say and say, God, heal me today. I've got the oil there. God, heal me today. God, restore me, soften my heart. Physically heal me, Lord. Emotionally heal me, Lord. Heal my eyes from lustful way of looking at other people. Heal my eyes, heal my mouth, heal my heart, heal my mind. Heal me, Jesus. Call upon the elders. Let them anoint you with oil. Let them pray and laying on of the hands and the sick shall recover and the prayer of a righteous man, a fervent prayer will avail much. Hallelujah.